In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can turn any regular cheap lens into a macro lens to get amazing close-up shots just like these. Getting into macro photography doesn't mean spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds on expensive gear. Sure, this professional Canon 100mm macro lens is pin sharp and works extremely well, but it's £900. It's only worth spending that sort of money if you're a pro or at least incredibly enthusiastic about getting into macro. Instead, what about something like Canon's Nifty 50? Now, this 50mm Prime cost me only about £100, and that was brand new, and about 10 years ago. It's very lightweight, it's made of plastic, which is not a sophisticated lens. And by itself, it's not really much of a macro tool. You can focus only something about 40, 50 centimeters or so in front of it, which means that you can't really get that close up on your subjects. And if you're doing very small subjects like little flies, little insects, then they're gonna to be totally lost in the scene. But that is where these extension tubes come in. I've talked briefly about extension tubes before on this channel, but I wanted to explain a little bit more about why these are so important. Basically, these tubes sit in between the camera and the lens. And by pushing the lens further away from the camera, it means you can now focus much, much closer to the front of the lens. So just take a look at this example I took with this lens, but no extension tubes. And here's the exact same shot, but this time using those extension tubes. The difference is huge, and it does basically turn this dirt cheap lens into an actual macro lens. And the great thing is, is that because these extension tubes, they don't have any glass in them, you can see I can poke my finger right the way through. There's no electronic elements in them either. It's basically very, very, very simple stuff. As a result, these are very cheap. In fact, this whole set of three, I think, costs something like £30 on Amazon. So about £30 for the extension tubes and about £100 for the lens. So £130 for a full macro lens setup. It's really not that bad. Certainly not against the £900 Canon equivalent. Now, as you can see, this set comes with three macro extension tubes, each one slightly bigger. The bigger one moves the lens further away from the camera and therefore you can focus closer to the lens. So the bigger the tube, the more macro you can get. But it's not a perfect solution, to be fair. I often find that I can't shoot with all three of them on for an extreme macro lens. Instead, I have to use just one or two because the camera really struggles to communicate with the lens and it causes all kinds of issues. It just means that it won't actually let me shoot. There may be technical ways around that that I'm just not really aware of, but I find I get the best results when I just use the one single biggest extension tube rather than then piggybacking the others on top of each other to make a massive one. Although even then, sometimes the camera won't communicate properly with the lens and it says there's errors, so I have to take it apart and put it back together just to make sure everything's lined up nicely. So it's really not an elegant solution for getting shots on location, but it is cheap. The other downside is that the area that's in focus when you're using extension tubes can be very, very narrow. So it can be difficult to make sure that exactly the right bit is in focus that you want. So as a result, I tend to find that I have to shoot at a narrow aperture, something like f8 to f16, to kind of maximize how much is actually in focus. Obviously then, the narrower the aperture, the less light you're coming in, and that can mean that you are relying more on using flash in your macro photography rather than the natural light. 
Also, while these do allow for autofocus with the lens, it does seem to rather slow down that autofocus communication and it can make it very, very hit and miss. So I find the best way of shooting for what I do at least is just to have the lens in manual mode and set the focus to the closest point and then just simply move the camera slightly in and out until you get your focus point spot on. Um, obviously, that also can be a little bit hit and miss and it takes a few, uh, a few goes to get it absolutely right um, but it does mean that you don't necessarily need to buy exactly these macro lenses I have found even cheaper versions which uh, don't even allow for autofocus they literally are just plastic rings that move the lens further away um, and that could save you 10 15 20 pounds um, but you don't need to spend the money on an autofocus uh, extension tube if you're not going to use the autofocus anyway but I do love that I can get a great macro setup for such a low amount of money and I have used this to take some of my shots before that you have seen on the channel but why don't we head outside now with this setup on the camera and see just how it works. beautiful day down here but this area is very very shaded and I'm going to need a lot more light in these shots so I'm going to head slightly further up the river it opens out a bit a lot more sunlight will come through that's going to be a really great place to get some shots a gentle breeze that keeps coming and it's uh, it's actually quite nice to be out in but it's moving the flowers and plants just enough to make it quite difficult to lock on so I'm having to be super patient and just waiting for the wind to settle down and for anything that's flying to um, come back to where I am. So I've just got back from my little trip and I've had a quick look at some of the shots on my computer and I definitely think I've got some decent stuff. I do really love going out and just trying to get some macro shots, whether I'm trying to make a video on lens choice and extension tubes or just for the sheer joy of being outside. The weather's great and it's a really, really nice way to spend a few hours. I suppose you're not always guaranteed success wherever you go to try and do this, but I tend to find that if I go to a spot which is fairly wild and then basically keep still, maybe kneel down somewhere near some bushes where there's some bees going, then eventually they kind of get used to your presence and they'll come back and you can start shooting away. But the techniques of actually taking the photos and techniques about composition and exposure is exactly the same whether you are using a super basic lens setup like this or you're using a professional macro lens. Of course, on days when it's not so sunny or if I'm in deep shadows or it's the end of the day, then I need to start adding in my own light, be that an LED panel or a speed light on top of the camera. Uh, just this lens alone isn't going to cut it, particularly, as I mentioned before, if I'm needing to use apertures that are around f8 or even narrower because it lets in so little light that you're just going to result in very, very dark shots. Having a look close up at some of these images on screen, I can definitely tell that there is not the same sharp 
sharpness and definition that I would expect to see from my professional lenses. But that is the difference between professional lenses and much more basic lenses. You're not gonna get the same sharpness. You're not gonna get the same clarity. And that is why one does cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds more than the other. So I'm really not trying to say that you will get the exact same images if you use this very affordable extension tube setup that you would get if you spent 900 pounds on a professional Canon lens. Clearly, there are going to be differences. This is not the same as this. But what this does let you do is get much closer to your subjects than you would be able to get with the lens alone. And sure, you may not get pin sharp clarity, but your images will be perfectly good enough for you to wanna to share with your family, with your friends, put on Instagram, put on Facebook. And if you've got some really cool looking insects and bugs and butterflies and whatever near you, then you can go out and start capturing those now. Now, of course, in this video, I've been showing you how I've been using the Nifty 50 and the extension tubes to make a super cheap macro setup, but you don't need to buy this lens specifically in order to go and do it. You could just use the extension tubes on any lens that you've already got. It may be that you've got the 24 to 105 f4 lens. Same thing. Slap that extension tube between the lens and your camera, and it'll turn this lens into something much more capable of getting close-up macro shots. And that will be again the same if you've just got a much more basic kit lens that may have come with the camera when you bought it often that's something like an 18 to 55 mil lens it's probably fairly cheap but again you can get those sorts of macro shots by using the extension tube i've even just been trying it on my 70 to 200 mil telephoto zoom this looks ridiculous of course but um, should be quite exciting to see whether I can get the same results with this and whether having the zoom is helpful because normally this can only focus within maybe two meters, uh, so about six feet um, uh, of the front of the lens. But with this, it's uh, it's it's much less than a foot uh, that I can focus now. So, um, of course, I don't much love the idea of carrying this massive heavy thing out uh, into the fields just so I can get some close-ups of some bees. So... Um, I think this one might be for staying at home. But the other thing is, if you are not too sure about whether macro is definitely for you, this is a much more affordable way of getting started. Then once you've got this, you can head out, see how you get on, see whether you really like doing this sort of thing, as you may find once you go out and spend two hours basically crouched in a bush hoping for a bee to turn up, but you actually don't have as much fun as perhaps you thought you were going to. If that's the case, then you'll be pretty glad that you haven't spent basically a grand on a much more expensive lens. But whichever camp you fall into, I do hope that this video has been helpful. I really hope that it's made you kind of think that you can get into doing this sort of photography in a way that maybe you thought was perhaps inaccessible before because of the high prices. If this has been useful, do please hit that like button, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and definitely please do subscribe if you don't already. I'm really hoping to grow the channel more and we've got some really cool stuff coming up over the next few months, so do please follow along. But for now, I will see you next time.